The last pattern in the composing method series is called substitute algorithm. The motivation here is that you have an algorithm and you want to replace it with something cleaner. Let's say for example this whole method body, this found person method, which accepts an array of people and it loops through that array looking for the first instance of one of three known values and the first one that it finds it returns and if it never finds it, it returns an empty string. So we can re-implement this in a different way. Notice that this is a public method on this object so we're going to delegate this functionality to a new private method. And for now we'll call it new found person. And here, we'll re-implement this algorithm in a different way. Start with a list of candidates for the names. And then we can loop through the array. And then our default condition is the empty string. And so now, we haven't changed any externally visible behavior of this class. We've just added this private function that nothing uses. And so, let's delegate to that function. So now the compiler tells us, with this green line, that there's unreachable code here. This whole algorithm is now not reachable, which is fine. That's the behavior that we want for this pattern. Because this uncovers an idea that I've been neglecting to explicitly mention in these previous patterns. And that's the idea of automated testing. Refactoring is, by definition, changing the implementation of code without changing the externally visible behavior of that code. And so refactoring hinges very strongly on being able to validate the behavior of that code. And that's where automated testing comes in. So, let's assume for a moment that we have a complete suite of automated tests. At this point in the refactoring, we would run those tests. And if those tests pass, then this method to which we've delegated hasn't changed the externally, externally visible behavior of the code. So then we could remove this code that we don't need and we can move this entire implementation back into this method and get rid of the method that we don't need. Now the reason we did those in separate steps was because if the tests didn't pass, if we had changed the externally visible behavior, then we wouldn't want to have lost the original code. We would back out that delegation so that the system can continue to work and then we can continue to refactor our code and re-implement our algorithm as needed. For something as simple as this example, that's probably not going to be a problem. But for a larger, more complex system, it's important to be able to continue to work on it and continue to do our own debugging without risking breaking the system in general. Because at some point we might have to stop what we're doing, check in some other values, some other code, and not want to break the whole the overall system. So even though what we've essentially done here is re-implement something, which we do all the time, because we maintained it in that pattern, it is still strictly a refactoring by that definition. That's it for the substitute algorithm pattern and for the composing methods series. Thanks for watching.